Hello, my name's Mark Higgins from UMETSAT, and this is our video for August 2014. We start the month with quite some variation across Europe. You can see in the maritime areas, UK, Ireland, northern Spain, France, a nice weather system bringing lots of rain to that region. And that was one of the summaries we can see from the weather services across the region. Some warm spells, but a lot of periods of rain were experienced for this month. That rain then moving across the continent. You can see at this particular time in the east, the afternoon convection. Later on during the day, you see those storms bubbling up with the afternoon heat. So here on the third, we can see some of those storms in Central Europe building up during the day. This classical summertime convection, quite indicative of having high surface temperatures. And you can see the, the general flow of air is from the west, so from the ocean, bringing lots of moisture to help those storms form. Latvia on the 4th was reporting its hottest day of the summer and that's an indication of the, the heat of the time of year. another system moving in from the east. This particular system caused a lot of rain in the UK and Ireland. With this particular animation, you can also see the clouds at night. So during the day, we look at the visible channels from the Meteosat satellite, which show us the sunlight that's reflected from the ground and the cloud. At night, what we're looking at are the temperatures of the land and cloud surfaces. So in this particular animation, what you'll see are the very bright white clouds. So you can see this general pattern at the beginning of the month, very slow movement coming in over the oceans, bringing that moisture in, in the western part of Europe, in the eastern part dominated by the summertime convection. So these very, very strong storms developing during the day. Here on the 7th, you can see a line of storms pretty much from the Baltics all the way down to Western Greece. And you can really see the ebb and the flow of those summer storms. Very, very severe in some places. These large convective events, big thunderstorms, bring very localized heavy rain and sometimes flooding, depending on where the rain falls. And if you have several days of these storms in a row, you'll have a very wet, moist land surface. So there's not much opportunity for the land to absorb the moisture. So you'll see here in Central Europe, after several days of storms, there would have been some areas that reported very localized and very severe flooding. Coming in towards the 10th and 11th, we see the effect of the extratropical storm Bertha. So Bertha started out its life in West Africa as a very small wave in the atmosphere, what's called an easterly wave. That wave developed into a cyclone which traveled across the Atlantic, through the Caribbean, and then across the Atlantic, turning westwards and then back towards Europe. That system was quite an intense system and brings quite a lot of rain across pretty much all of Western Europe. And we can see that quite nicely here on the 10th. And you'll see it very clearly overnight as well with that cold cloud showing up nice and clearly in a kind of a comma shape. There we go, moving across Germany and into Poland, the Czech Republic and Switzerland.
all of the moisture that was associated with that storm, so it's picked up a lot of moisture as it's traveled over the Atlantic, will now be available to produce more convective storms after the main system has passed. So here on the 12th and 13th, a lot of thunderstorms reported in France, and you can see them here on the animation. End system there stretching from Italy all the way through to the Baltics, bringing a lot more rain, and to the west of it, a lot more of this convection fueled by the moisture that's been available from the sea. This system actually brought an incredible amount of rain, causing the Rettische Bahn in Switzerland to collapse over one of the bridges. Uh, there were some reports that a whole month's worth of rain fell in that one period. And that gives an indication of some of the effects that these large summer storms can have. They can be very, very serious, devastating effects. It's one of the roles of weather forecasters to forecast these storms naturally, and satellite data play an important part in that. And we're still seeing in uh, Central Europe these storms traveling through really quite a lot of convection for this time of year. So a lot of places were reporting much, much wetter Augusts than usual. And you can see those storms in the Baltic really developing as we come into the afternoon, covering most of the Baltic region, bringing quite a lot of localized and heavy rain. Also on the 16th, you can see that low just north of the UK, west of Norway, bringing more cloud and rain across North and West Europe. Europe's weather is very dependent on the position of the Azores High at this time of year. If the Azores High is a little bit further north, it pushes these storms further north, and we end up with much brighter, clearer weather in northern and western Europe at this particular time of the year. Right now, though, we're seeing those systems moving in across the ocean, across the UK, France, and then through Germany and towards Eastern Europe. You can really see the divide between the systems in the kind of northern west and the south and east. So the south and east much, much clearer. So that's the effect of the high pressure to the south, just keeping the weather systems as they're traveling further north. Quite often in summer, that high pressure, if it's further north, will keep us even clearer of the summertime storms. So Spain has been relatively clear for most of the month. We see as we come into the last third of the month, 20th, 21st, a lot of those storms being a bit further south. And so we see them over northern Spain now. So that system just moving over Spain, bringing a lot more rain than we saw earlier on in the month. And you can see as the moisture in that system travels over Spain and over the hot regions, it really develops those convective systems. So you see overnight on the 21st, that's now traveling across southern France and into Italy. And that sort of storm system keeps on traveling.
One thing to note, if you look in the centre of Turkey, you'll see a very small cyan blob. That's the salt associated with a lake there. So it's a similar colour to the cloud tops you see in the daytime images, that cyan colour, which is very indicative of ice clouds. And the reason it looks cyan is the salt has a similar appearance to the satellite uh, as the ice does on the top of the storms. Coming in overnight on the 25th, moving to the 26th, you can see a low pressure just over UK. More rain moving over Germany now into Poland. And we'll see as we come into the later parts of the month, um, another former cyclone, uh, former cyclone Christabel, which came across on the 31st. For my own part, while Europe was experiencing uh, this later part of the month with uh, plenty of rain moving across systems, I was actually in Kenya running a training course for weather forecasters uh, across Africa. And there we were looking at some of the storm systems developing over Western Africa. Very, very similar to here, but much, much more intense, leading to, um, in one case, some significant rainfall in Senegal. So as we come in towards the end of the month, quite typical for the month, a lot of weather systems and convective weather seen across Europe. Some places reporting slightly warmer than average, although much cooler than we've seen in some recent years. Other places reporting much cooler, but much, much wetter 